All right, how's it going everyone? So for this video, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go over how to install a piston and rod assembly into an engine. So the engine that I have is a 5.7 liter Eagle engine. I don't know what year Ram truck it's out of, I'll be honest with you. It was sitting abandoned at my shop uh, covered in rainwater. So I've gone through, uh, cleaned up the boards, we've honed the cylinders. We are gonna reuse the stock pistons and rods. Uh, they have been cleaned up and checked for cracks and everything's good, but we are gonna reuse or sorry, we're not gonna reuse and we're gonna use new uh, piston rings. So what we first need to do is we first need to get the piston onto the connecting rod. Uh, with this particular engine and with a lot of engines, there is gonna be a direction that these get installed. Now, these pistons do have an arrow etched on them and you can just barely lightly see it. If I get the light just right, but the arrow is right there and it's pointing to the right. So in this case, this would be pointing towards the front of the engine is what the arrow is going to indicate. And you can usually tell a difference between the major and the minor thrust uh, portions of the skirt of the piston as well. This is a floating piston pin. So what we're gonna have is to start this, I pre-install one of the uh, lock rings, one of these little doohickeys, and I'm going to uh, orient this so that it's going to be the arrow pointed forward for the cylinder that I'm aiming for, and I'm gonna be aiming for cylinder number one. So that will be with, let's see, the arrow pointing forward like that. And then if that's the case, we're going to have the connecting rod like this. So then that would put this guy like that. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to oil the uh, piston pin a little bit to try to aid in it sliding in. Uh, and it slides in usually pretty easy after that. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of light oil on the wrist pin on this to try to aid in it sliding in. So we're gonna line it up. And press it all the way in. Now I already have one of the wire clips and the reason why I do that is that stops the uh, wrist pin from sliding out. So we now need to install this wrist pin. It's usually a good idea to make sure that everything moves nice and free uh, so that nothing binds up. If you can push it in with your hand, you're, you're usually looking pretty good at that point. So what I like to do with these is depending on the piston and rod design, as you can see here, we have a little indentation here that I can get the clip in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to aim for getting this portion of the clip in the groove and walk it around and, and kind of hold it firm and then use my pick to pull in on this open section and drop that down in and make sure that it sits in its groove. So from there, we're, we're nicely seated with the clip. The clip's in on both sides. From here, we can then uh, assemble the ring pack kit. All right, so at this point, we've gotten the connecting rod oriented on the piston and what cylinder we're gonna be going off of. I do like to do this like I have everything laid out uh, in, you know, a part. I like to do this one at a time. That way you get, you know, cylinder one and cylinder one, cylinder two and cylinder two, so, so on and so forth. So you get everything assembled the way that it's supposed to, you don't just, you know, get everything assembled and have it misassembled from there. So with the piston on the connecting rod, now is a good time to do the ring pack. Now, depending on the design, sometimes the oil control valve will cover over the wrist pin right here, and that can be problematic. So that's why you're gonna wanna install the rings uh, after you've installed the connecting rod. Now, this ring pack that I have, uh, it's always important when you open these boxes to be really gentle because what it'll have is all the directions that all the rings go in. So you can see top ring, uh, second ring, and then the bottom ring and the oil control ring. So we're gonna start with the oil control ring. I'm gonna put the spring portion of the oil control ring on first because it's probably not coming up in camera, but there's a little step groove. So these rings are fairly flexible and go on pretty easy. However, they're very easily damaged. So you drop the first ring down and then we're gonna put our two actual scraper rings on. So from here, we're just gonna fish in one, one section of it and then feed it around real nice and easy. And 
And then we're gonna do the lower ring, again, trying to make sure the gaps are in different spots. And we put this guy on. And then fitting that oil control ring on from there. So the next one that you're, that's a little bit easier to do because we're gonna go from the top, trying to avoid to scrape off this, uh, this factory coating, is gonna be our second ring. Now the second ring does have a groove on it. Now, to understand if this is forward or top or bottom, a lot of times manufacturers will put little dots or dimples and that's what that little dot is right there for, is that's to indicate that that's gonna be up. Now when installing these, you can use your thumbs. However, uh, you know, you start to bleed after a little bit so you can use a, snap or a piston ring expander. Uh, the important thing with this is you wanna be gentle with it. You don't wanna over expand it because then they crack, especially if you drop them like that. This guy's gonna pop out the whole time. Gotta go quick. All right, so I'm just gonna lightly expand this and then aim for the second groove. and get that guy in the second groove. And I always like to make sure to squeeze a little bit to make sure it's going in. And then our top ring. Now our top ring does not have an orientation because it is a square cut ring. So there's no dimple for top or bottom. So it really doesn't matter which direction you put it in. Uh, what we are gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our ring gaps are 45 degrees away from each other at a minimum. And then we can just walk the ring on like so. So from there we have all five rings installed onto our piston and rod assembly, and we can then go to compress it. Now there's a couple different options for compressing it. Uh, you can use uh, a basic compressor like this, uh, which is going to grip around the, uh, the rings and uh, you're gonna clamp, on, clamp down on it with a set of pliers. It's important to understand that this does have a direction for a bottom. Uh, it's also one of those things too that you want to make sure you're going off the right size. So the size for these is 99 millimeters, which we're going to put be right in the middle there. So it's 98 to 105, and that's going to be a good specification for where we need to go. Uh, I usually like to dry fit at least one to make sure that I'm not going to wreck the rings at all. Collapsing this down and to make sure that when this clamps, that this clamps, you know, and, and actually does secure all the rings in place because we don't want the rings to pop out at all. Now this is one of those things that it is important to make sure when we do install this piston and rod assembly that we lubricate it before we put it in the cylinder. Uh, a lot of people like to use engine oil. I've actually found uh, the thing that I like to use most is actually ATF. ATF seems to work pretty well. So what I have set up is I have the engine on the stand here. This is the cylinder that we're going for, cylinder number one. So a couple things that we need to do before we drop this in and lubricate it, uh, we need to take the connecting rod big end off. Now this uses uh, bolts instead of studs. There is a factory tool, I think it's something like number 8857 or whatever, uh, that essentially is little plastic dowels you can put in and they're, they're guides uh, effectively. And, and what they do is they, uh, they allow you to guide the piston in around the, uh, uh, the journal. Uh, a good trick for that if you don't have one of these is you can use uh, a quarter inch drive extension in these, but we'll just try to be real careful. So we wanna make sure the big end rod is off. If you have an engine that has studs, you can use these little uh, covers to go over the studs so that you don't nick the uh, crankshaft journal when you're going in. Uh, and if you don't have these, you can just use vacuum line or, or, uh, or any type of rubber hose to prevent it from being nicked. It's important too to uh, make sure that we're turning the journal uh, down to bottom dead center. Again, that way we're, we're less likely to nick uh, the crankshaft. So right there, we're at top dead center. So we're gonna drop down to as low as we can at bottom dead center. You're gonna lubricate the rings and the skirt with ATF. Now again, most people like to use engine oil and that's fine. I find that ATF works a little bit better. It's a little bit slippery. It's my preference. If you wanna use whatever you want, that's fine with me. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that the ring gaps are opposite themselves and then make sure that we're all lubricated on the skirt and that the rings are all lubricated as well. Now 
We're gonna orient the tool so that the arrow bottom is down to face the block. We're gonna get that over. And what I like to do is the, our arrow is pointing forward that way. I like to make sure that when we have the pliers they're away from everything so that you're not gonna hit anything. So we'll have the pliers clamped down, down away from the block there. We're gonna install the tool. on the grooves and this is going to lock it down it's going to lock it and you i like to keep pressure on it the whole time as well so keeping in mind where our arrow is located we're going to get the skirt section started and i like to press down on the piston ring compressor tool so that it's completely flush with the uh the block and then i'm going to use this little thing that's basically like a maraca to lightly press down on the piston And that's all that's to it. So what we're going to do now is I don't want to press it in any further. I'm going to rotate the motor over and that way I can line it up so that I don't run the risk of dinging the uh, crankshaft journal. So we'll rotate the motor over and then bolt it up. All right, with the motor turned over, we can then reach down and grab the connecting rod and slide it up. You want to make sure there's not too much resistance with it and that it's going to be in place. We also want to make sure that the tangs on the bearing or lining up in the groove that they're supposed to. Now this is a powdered rod, so it is very important to not drop these uh, because the, uh, the fracture on the rod itself uh, does lock the rod connecting rod ends together. So we'll add another little bit of assembly lube and then hand thread these down, making sure that the tangs line up with themselves. Now the torque specification for this 5.7 Hemi is 15 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. Have the torque wrench set. And this door is just about to stop. Same thing with the other side. That's one. Double check it just to make sure. And then from here, do 90 degrees. Now I'm going to do it the way that I've always done it. I know you can get a digital torque wrench and I know that you can you know, get the angle finder, but 90 degrees is not that hard to, to be able to find. So if you get to where you're right there, pull it up 90 degrees. I'm gonna be honest with you, once you get a little bit of experience with this, you're gonna do it by feel mainly. Uh, you know, you're feeling when the bolt's actually stretching. And then 90 degrees from there. So at this point with everything torqued, and we know where everything's in the right orientation, it's always a good idea to turn the motor over to make sure everything turns nice and smooth. That way if there's an issue, like, I don't know, perhaps you put, you know, plus 25 millimeter uh, connecting rod bearings in there and the motor doesn't want to turn you know that you go look at this one first instead of you know hammering them all in and then, and then running into an issue so at this point I got to put the remaining seven in and uh, then you know double check to make sure the motor is turning over and everything's ready to go to bolt the uh, oil pan on the timing cover on and the cylinder heads on okay so with that we have all eight uh, pistons and rods in uh, with a little bit of issues, um, didn't really help that the ring kit came with an extra one of these. So we went back through and completely tore the motor down to try to find uh, the missing oil control ring to discover that we had them all installed and we just got an extra one in the box. Uh, but the motor turns over nice and easy. So you want the motor to turn over smooth uh, with very little effort. There is going to be a dragging noise and that is just of the uh, pistons going up and down and the rings dragging on the cylinder walls. That's normal. Uh, but other than that, everything uh, is back together where it should be. So we just got to get the covers and the cylinder head on this engine and then it's uh, ready to rock and roll. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. Hope you found it entertaining and uh, see you in the next one.